Welcome to OOPS Tutorials. I am Venkat. This is part 2 OOPS in depth. In the previous video, we have discussed about inheritance rule 1 that is access modifiers. In this video, we are going to discuss about the same inheritance rule 1 but about the memory allocation process. The rule 1 says in inheritance, the execution of a child class always starts by invoking the default constructor of its parent class. So, parent class constructor must be accessible to child class or else inheritance will not be possible. The same thing based on the rule 1, we have made the private constructor as the public constructor. So, our program started working. Then we thought of, we guessed this output and we ran the program and confirmed the same thing. But if you are surprised, how come this output will come? If you want to understand this easily, we need to discuss about the memory allocation process in inheritance. So, let us discuss the memory allocation process. Here you can see there is a parent class and child class. Child class is inheriting from parent class. So, whenever you try to create object for child class, so I am creating object for child class cobj equal to new child class or we can directly use the new signature child class obj equal to new child class so whenever we try to call the child class constructor so this will try to look for the parent class the top level parent class then it will try to call the parent class constructor default constructor parent class default constructor so what happens when we call the parent class constructor the memory will be allocated for parent class so the memory will be allocated for that particular parent class then it will starts executing the child class constructor whenever the child class constructor got executed the memory will be created for child class so now the memory is created for both the parent and child then only we can able to call both parent class members and child class members using this particular child object if the memory is not allocated for parent we cannot call the parent class members using child class that's why memory will be allocated for both the parent and child when we create object for a child class using this object only we need to consume parent class members if there is no memory we cannot consume parent class members that's why the memory will be allocated for both parent and child this is two level inheritance let us look at the three level inheritance consider there are three classes in inheritance so first one is a grandparent class and parent class is inheriting from that and child class is inheriting from parent class in this case when you try to create object for child c o b j equal to new child class this is the statement i am executing whenever we are trying to create object for child class it will try to call the top level parent class constructor first so it will call this parent class constructor first the memory will be allocated whenever the constructor got executed the memory will be created for grandparent after that this will try to invoke the second parent so whenever the second parent default constructor got executed the memory will be created for that particular parent class so memory is allocated for this parent class so once the parent class constructor call is completed then it will tries to call the child class constructor meaning same class constructor so here in this case the memory will be created for child class so now the memory is created for grandparent and parent and child so now the memory is available for all three classes using this particular object we can consume all three class members so that is how it is happening so when the memory is not created for parent classes how can we call the parent class members using the child class object because the memory is allocating for all the parent classes that is how we are able to consume 
the parent class members inside a child class using child class object. That's the memory allocation process for three level inheritance. The same will happen for any level of inheritance. Coming to this program, let us try to understand whenever we are trying to create object for child class, the first thing it will does is it will calls the parent class constructor. Whenever the parent class constructor got called, the memory will be created for this particular parent. Next thing it will does is it will tries to call the same class constructor. Whenever the child class constructor got called, the memory will be created for child class constructor too. Whenever the object creation is done, then it will start calling the method. When it is calling child class method using the child class object, this will start executing this particular method inside the child class memory. So then that is how the execution will go on. So if you notice, first thing happens is the printing the parent class constructor. Second thing here is the child class constructor. Third one is the child M1. If you can execute and see the output, we can see the same output. We can see first the parent class constructor got executed, then child class constructor got executed, then child method got executed. 